This program has been made possible by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. So if you study the Word and you you see what God is promising and you get into agreement with that and you believe that and you keep believing it and you keep believing it and you keep believing it, then you will get it. Thank you for joining us today on Enjoying Everyday Life. I'm talking this week about the importance of studying God's Word. At least that's what I talked about yesterday. I'm going to be talking about it again today and tomorrow. Today I'm talking about believing God. But believing God is believing the Word. Because when you study the Word, you're really studying the nature and the character of God and His heart for His people. And so... So many people say, read the Bible. And yes, it's great. Read the Bible. Any, any chance you get, read the Bible. But we need to go deeper than that. I think that reading the Bible is kind of like the surface, but studying the Bible, you go deeper. A lot of people think because they go to church on Sunday that that's, well, I hear the word. Well, that's good too. But you need to invest time in studying the word of God. Mark 4.24 In the Amplified Bible says, and he said to them, be careful what you're hearing. The measure of thought and study you give to the truth that you hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you and more besides will be given to you who hear. I love this. It's basically saying exactly what I'm trying to say. You hear the word, be careful that what you're hearing is accurate, coming from a, an accurate Bible teacher. And then the measure of thought and study that you give to that truth that you hear is the measure of virtue and knowledge, like real knowledge, not just head knowledge, but revelation knowledge. You know, I always say we, we don't need more information, we need more revelation. It needs to get from here to here. It needs to be incorporated into our our lives. We don't just need to hear it, but we need to do the word. In John chapter 13, Jesus washed his disciples' feet. And when you get to verse 17, he said, Knowing these things, happy are you if you do them. See, just knowing the word won't add the joy to our life that God wants us to have. It's the doing it and There's power in the Word to help you do it because the Holy Spirit works through the Word and He will give you the grace to do it. But sometimes you may have to study it for a period of time. For example, if you need to forgive someone that's hurt you, well, you might hear somebody say you need to forgive your enemies. Well, you might think, well, I can't. It's just not fair. They don't deserve forgiveness. It's too hard. It's too hard. But if you study yourself, and it takes time. But investing time in the Word of God is just that. It's investing. It's not wasting. It's investing. And you know, we all have the same amount of time. And it's really up to us what we do with it. And you, anybody, anybody who really wants to can carve out some of their time to study the Word. And when you spend time in the Word, you're spending time with God. And you're not doing it for Him. It's not like an obligation or something you owe God. But you're doing it for yourself because you're learning how to live right and how to recognize what's right from what's wrong. And you have an enemy A spiritual enemy, Satan, the devil, and demonic power, evil forces. And the way that they gain access into our lives is through lies and deceptions. And the only way that you can ever recognize when the devil is lying to you is if you know the truth of God's word. I've been studying the word of God for 45 years. And I can tell you that it has completely transformed me. 
And the Bible says that we are to be transformed. That means changed from the inside out into the image of Jesus Christ. So we look in the Word and we, we see Jesus all through it. This is what He would do. This is what He wouldn't do. And then as we study that, we become transformed. Well, if I really want to forgive somebody, but I'm having a hard time doing it, I don't need to just say, well, I can't, it's too hard, or I've tried and it doesn't work. I need to just keep studying those scriptures, keep meditating on those scriptures, keep thinking about those scriptures until I'm able to follow through and do what the Word tells me to do. One of the best decisions that you can ever make for yourself is to stop hating people and stop being mad at them. What's the point in hating somebody that's out having a good time and couldn't care less if you're mad? Maybe they don't deserve your forgiveness, but you do deserve peace and joy. And so you do yourself a favor and forgive. Now, the word believe. Jesus said, you believe in God, believe also in me. You can believe or you can doubt. It's up to you. And I just want to start by saying if you have to make a decision that you're going to believe what the Word says because the Word says it, not because you think it's right or you feel it's right. This is not about head knowledge. It's about revelation knowledge. And you can't figure everything out. There's a lot of things that God tells us to do that just plain don't make any sense. Like if you want to have more money, you got to give away some of what you've got. Well, anybody would think, well, that makes no sense. If I give away some of what i got, I'm going to have less. Well, in the world, that's the way that works, but not in God's kingdom. In God's kingdom, you give first, and then you receive actually more back than you gave. He says the first will be last, and the last will be first. Well, that doesn't make much sense either. Forgive people who have hurt you, who have abused you and treated you unjustly. The Bible says that when we do that, that God is a God of justice and he will bring justice into our life. He will be our vindicator. Why spend your life trying to get somebody back that hurt you when if you turn the whole situation over to God, he can take care of it and you can be happy and be enjoying your life in the meantime. But I have several scriptures here all that talk about Just believing, and I want you to listen to these. Then Jesus said to the centurion in Matthew 8, 13, Go and let it be done just as you believed it would be. Wow. So he says, you're going to get what you believe. Be it unto you even as you have believed. Wow. Think about that. Well, sometimes it wouldn't be surprising what you ended up with if you looked at what you believed. You say, well, I, I can't help it. Yes, you can. <laughs> you can you can believe the word or you can doubt the word. It's up to you. And his servant was healed at that very moment. Be it unto you even as you believe. You know, if you're a negative person that's always finding something to grumble and complain about and never happy, you're a doubter and you're just, you're going to have a miserable life. But if you say, yes, I, I've got problems. There's problems everywhere, problems everywhere you look. But God is greater. I believe that God is greater. I believe that God is for me and not against me. I believe the word of God and I believe that God will take everything that happens to me and make it work out for my good. If you believe those kind of things and you're full of hope, then you're going to have good things happen to you. If you don't, then you're going to also get what you believe and just keep having problems after problems after problems. I had had so many bad things happen to me in the younger years of my life that I actually got to the point where I expected bad things to happen, and that's exactly what I got. And I had to learn how to believe the Word of God and believe the promises of God. There's over 7,000 promises in the Word of God. Surely you can find a whole bunch of them that you can get in agreement with and believe. Mark 9, 23, everything is possible 
for the one who believes. Now, I added in here, everything the word promises is possible for those who believe. Be it unto you even as you believe. Well, that has to be within God's will. I'm not going to become a multi-billionaire just because I decide to believe that I'm going to be one. God has a will for us, and he has promised to meet our needs, and I can believe that. I can say God's going to meet my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ because he promises that he will in Philippians 4.19. But even that promise is made to those who are giving into kingdom work. So if you study the word and you, you see what God is promising and you get into agreement with that and you believe that, and you keep believing it, and you keep believing it, and you keep believing it, then you will get it. Therefore, Mark eleven twenty four. 24, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, here again, has to be according to God's will. Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, which this is so interesting. You believe you have received it even though you can't see it and you will get it. Well, see, we walk by faith, not by sight or feelings. So we pray for something in God's will and we believe that we've received it in the spiritual realm. And then while I'm waiting to get it, which is a testing time, (laughs) I keep believing it and I keep believing it and I keep believing it. My father who abused me was born again at the age of 80. And we, I, Dave and I got to baptize him and I saw him really changed. You know that I prayed for that man's salvation on and off for a good 30 years. You believe and you keep on believing. You ask and you keep on asking. Mark 16, 16, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Believes what? Believes that Jesus is the Christ, that he bore your sins, that he died on the cross for you, that he paid the penalty that you owed, he balanced your account with God. And if you believe in him, you repent of your sins, you'll be saved. Romans 15, 13, I love. Now may the God of hope, he is a God of hope. Not a God of hopelessness, but a God of hope. Fill you with all joy and peace in believing. It's all over the place. In believing. One time I'd gotten all down and was feeling depressed and had lost my joy and didn't know why and God led me to this scripture in Romans 15, 13. He said, well, you feel the way you feel because you've stopped believing. I had started doubting. You know, Satan will tempt you to doubt. He'll lie to you and he'll, he'll, he'll put every negative thing in front of you that he can come up with that's ever happened to you. See there, if God loved you, that wouldn't have happened. Now, just just look at how long you've been waiting for that to happen and looking at everybody else is getting that, but you're not getting it. You have to remember to say, devil, you're a liar, and I believe that God's word is true. James 2.23, and the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. Wow. What did Abraham believe? Something that made absolutely no sense. God told him, to leave his home and go to a place that I will show you and I will make you the father of many nations. And he told him that he'd become wealthy and have many children and all these promises that just... I mean, imagine God saying, leave where you're at and go to a place I will show you. He didn't even know where he was going. But he believed God. He believed that God would guide him and would lead him and that that God would give him a child. Well, you know, by the time he got his child, he and his wife were both long past the childbearing age. But it says, all hope being gone, he hoped on in faith. He kept believing God. And sure enough, he eventually had his child. 
Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. What makes us right with God? Believing. Romans 11.6, or Hebrews 11.6. What must we do to please God? We must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I believe that. I believe that God is in this very room right now. I believe he lives in me. I believe he lives in every believer. And I believe that God has got so many wonderful things planned for you, but you got to get in agreement with him. Start agreeing with God and stop agreeing with the enemy. Acts 16, 31, they replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. And I love Hebrews 4, 3. Now we who have believed do enter the rest of God. Oh, now this is a big one because the world is full of people who are just stressed out and burned out and they're weary and they're worn out from worrying and they, they, they don't... Entering the rest of God is not like... I'm not talking about laying down and taking a nap. It's an internal rest. Actually, when you study the word in the original language, it's not a rest from work, but a rest in work. And you see, I'm working right now. Believe it or not, this is hard work. But I'm at rest while I'm doing it. You know why? Because I'm not worried about whether or not you're going to like it. I'm not worried about whether or not you're going to like me. I did my part. I studied. Now I walked up here trusting God that he would do the rest. You can enter the rest of God. It's the most wonderful place to be. Now, let's talk about our position in Christ. And I want to start by saying that as believers, we actually live in two places. God lives in two places. He lives in you, but he also has a throne in heaven. Our Father who art in heaven. But then there's other scriptures that says, I will come and dwell in you and you will be my home. Well, my feet are on this platform but I'm going to show you a scripture in a few minutes. It says I'm seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. So how can I be here and be there? Well, I'm here physically, but spiritually, my heart is already in heaven. I know where I'm going to go when it's time for me to leave this earth. And I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of the things that are going on in the world today because I believe that God has a timing for each one of us and that he will take care of us if we put our trust in him. So many people live their whole lives in fear. Ephesians 1, 17 through 23, and I'll explain some of these as I go through. I keep asking, Paul said, I keep asking, I like that, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you might know him better. Well, you know what? I think we pray for a lot of wrong stuff. Or we pray for things that aren't nearly as important. How many of you have been praying for wisdom and revelation and to know God better? Probably not nearly as many as have been praying to get married or for their spouse to change or to get a different job or to make more money or all the different kinds of things that we pray for. And it's okay to pray for those things. But if we have more wisdom, we'll end up knowing how to do those things and we won't even have to be praying about it. If we know God better, we're going to quickly recognize when the enemy is working in our lives and when God is working in our lives. I'll give you an example. God is always going to give you time to think about something and make a right decision. The devil tries to push us to make quick decisions. So even like all this stuff that you hear on TV, if you call in the next three minutes, you'll get this free along with your order. But you have to call in the next three minutes. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't have to do anything in three minutes. I'd rather turn down something supposedly free than make a mistake and put money into something I don't need to be putting it into because somebody told me I have to do it in three minutes. I've been through that when I've been out shopping. Now, we've got a sale on this, and the store's closing in 45 minutes, and if you don't get it tonight, then you're going to miss the sale. Well, then I'll just have to miss the sale because i got to think about it. 
The only way that we're going to make right decisions is if we think about it. But if you don't know God better, you won't know that. Paul said, my determined purpose is to know him and the power of his resurrection. We need to know God's character. We need to know how to recognize when God's at work and when the enemy is at work. He said, I pray that the eyes of your heart might be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. And one thing that you can always have if you have Jesus is hope. Things may not be working out in your life right now, but you can have hope. And hope means the expectation of something good. I say this every morning, something good is going to happen to me today and something good is going to happen through me today. I refuse to be an old negative grouch who just has always got a glass half empty and see everything from a negative standpoint. And I used to be that way. I pray that your eyes would be open, that you would know the hope to which he's called you and the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. You have an inheritance. You're a joint heir with Christ. And the Bible teaches us that everything that Jesus has been given from God is also ours. And that you might know his incomparable great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. If the same power that dwells, that raised him from the dead dwells in you, it will quicken your mortal body. Can you believe what I'm saying here? The same power that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. Dwells in me. So why do we need to go around saying, I can't do that. It's just too hard. It's I'm too weak. It's too hard. No, we can do anything that God tells us to do. But we have to know what his word tells us to do. He raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. When he had accomplished our cleansing of sin and the riddance of our guilt, he sat down. You know, when God created the world, he created it in six days. And on when he was finished with his work... He rested. Well, God didn't rest because he was tired. He rested as an example to us. And we need to take one day out of seven and rest. Rest our physical bodies. Rest our souls. And Jesus, when his work was finished, he ascended on high. And the Bible says he sat down. And there's significance in that, that he sat down. He entered rest. He had finished his job. But the better news is, as the Bible says, that we are seated in him. So if he's seated, we're seated. In Romans 6, it says when he died to sin, we died to sin. When he was raised, we were raised. Everything that Jesus gets, we get because we're in him and he is in us. You know, if you just think about that for a long time, that's enough to just get you as happy as you can possibly be. I started thinking the other day about Colossians chapter 1 that says the mystery of the ages is Christ in me, the hope of glory. And I thought, my goodness, not only am I in Christ, but he lives in me. How wonderful is that? That'll bring you a closeness with the Lord that maybe you've never experienced before. You know, I want all of you to enter the rest of God. And the Bible says that we enter the rest of God through believing. The Israelites... And the wilderness never entered the rest of God because they were disobedient and they were disobedient because they didn't believe. When you believe right, then you'll live right. If you believe wrong, then you're going to live wrong. It's a rest not from work, but in work. Hebrews 3.18 and says, To whom did God swear that they would never enter his rest? if it was not to those who disobeyed. So we see that they were not able to enter because of their unbelief. See, if you have a problem, whatever it is, you lost your job. You don't know what you're going to do. Well, the first temptation is to worry. I understand that. Sometimes I have a problem with worry. The only way I know to battle that is to get out my Bible and Look up scriptures about how God's promised to take care of me and that I don't have to worry. 
And there's so much power in the Word of God that it will begin to dissipate that fear that's trying to take hold of me. And so you can either multiply the problem by thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about what am I going to do, what am I going to do, how am I going to get another job, what am I going to do. We're going to drown in debt, we're going to lose our house, and all the ugly lies that the devil tries to tell you. Or you can say, no, I'm going to believe God that he's going to take care of me, he's going to meet my needs, and he's going to help me find a job. And not only any job, but he's going to help me find a better job than the one that I had. Well, when you believe that, then you can enter God's rest. So instead of worrying about it all the time and saying all kinds of negative things to all kinds of people, you can enter the rest of God. God will work on your problem, and you can, of course, look for a job, pray for a job, do your part, do everything that you're supposed to do. But trust God when you go for interviews to give you favor. Don't let the devil ruin your life with worry and stress. Put yourself in God's hands and believe the promises in the Word of God. But you won't know what those promises are if you don't study the Word. And today we're offering you our everyday life study Bible. It's from the Amplified Version of the Bible, which I've always liked and still like it. And it's got it's full of articles, it's full of life points, it's it's going to help you understand the Bible. Invest in the Word of God. It's the best investment that you can make. We've got several different versions available, hardback, leather, different colors. Pick the one you like the best and make a habit out of studying the Word of God and believe the promises of God and be it unto you even as you believe. God loves you so much, and he does have a good plan for your life. And if you believe that, you will see it come to pass. Thank you for joining us today. See God's Word in a whole new way by studying the Everyday Life Bible. Today, we're offering the large print edition. It's perfect for readers of all ages, especially those who enjoy a bigger font size. This one-of-a-kind study tool is filled with practical commentary by Joyce that helps make the Bible easier to understand. The Everyday Life Bible comes in an amplified version and easily fits inside a bag so you can take it wherever you go. With a black leather luxe cover and silver pages, today's resource would make an excellent gift for both men and women. Order your copy today for a donation of $55. Visit online at JoyceMeyer.org or call 1-800-727-9673. The Joyce Meyer Conference is back. If you will start crying out to God on a regular basis, I need more of you in my life. You better put on your seatbelt and get ready for the ride of your life. Coming to Phoenix, Arizona, February 17th and 18th with worship by Dream City Worship. In Hampton, Virginia, April 21st and 22nd with worship by Matt Brock. For more information and a complete conference schedule, visit JoyceMeyer.org or call 1-866-C-JOYCE. For more information, visit JoyceMeyer.org. This program has been made possible by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries.